Greetings, everyone. A little courtside basketball team and player card introduction tonight. Um, when you order seasons from FTP Sports, courtside basketball by FTP Sports Games, by the way. When you order any seasons from FTP Sports Games, whether it's baseball, the baseball game, football game, basketball game, um, or the hockey game, everything comes in an XL file. So what that allows you to do is that allows you to customize the cards. So what I want to start with, let's start with Ben Gordon here from the 2011-12 Pistons. This is what the cards look like when you get them, if you printed them just straight out of the Excel file. It's the name, statistics, height, weight, all that stuff. And then I'm going to go through each section of the card here shortly. But what you can do, since they are in Excel, is you can customize your cards. So these are team cards here. You can see that I put team logos on 14, 15, Golden State, 92, 93, Bulls, 83, 84, Nuggets, 11, 12, Celtics, different design, 85, 86, Celtics, 76, 77, Philadelphia, and Portland. Kind of see how I, what I did to kind of liven it up a bit. Um, I'm not a fan of really, and this is just a personal preference, I'm not a fan of like all the different colors of the of the numbers on the card. I kind of like this. Simplistic, straight black and white with the team logo. And then on some of these, I this is one of the first sets of cards that I had was the 85, 86 Celtics. And I just, you know, kept the uh, the standard color in there. Did it something a little different here with 11 and 12. Um, just put the shadow of the um, the logo in the background. Just kind of a different look. Um, went back to playing stuff for the 83-84 set. And then 92-93 Bulls. Just a little bit of color. And the... Um, I printed these at like... Printed these at like 75%. So that's why you see a lot of different sizes here. Um... So I'm going to go over the team cards first, and then I'm going to go over each section of the individual player cards. So let's start with let's just let's just start over here with with Golden State. So you're obviously going to get the coach, the arena they play in. This is their home card. Each team has a home and away card. This is their offensive team card. Okay? Um, this game nails the pace of each individual team to a T. The, the lower the number, this is a 1 to 100 number, by the way. If... You do a pace check, and I'm going to do a separate video on that. If you do a pace check, and the 1 to 100 number is 1 to 17, Golden State is out in quick offense. So they're going to put a, they're going to put a shot up basically early in the shot clock. Okay? Um, this is a draw foul number, and this is a three-point shot number. This is um, a 1 to 10 number. This is a 1 to 20 number. But I'm going to go over all this in a separate video. But look at look at the, the the transition number for Golden State versus the ninety two Bulls versus the run and gun eighty three eighty four Denver Nuggets significantly different right they didn't shoot threes as much in the eighties here's the eleven twelve Celtics the eighty five eighty six Celtics. I know um, the 86, 87 Lakers have a transition number here of 29. And look at the fast pace from the 76, 77 teams. 43, 50. Philadelphia's bit and, and Portland are basically going to get out in transition after a made basket at least half the time, pretty much. How well do they draw a foul? 
things like that. Now let's take a look at the defensive cards for these two teams. Um, if a team gets out in transition, you're also checking to see if they stop. This is their ability to stop a transition, ability to stop the set offense, and ability to stop the fast break. These are all 1 to 10 numbers. This is their team pick and roll defense. This is their ability to cause an auxiliary play, whether it's a steal, a turnover, an out-of-bounds, or a loose ball play, or any other type of auxiliary play, like a kick ball or something like that. This is their, this is a one to 10 number. This is their foul number. And then you have the field goal defense. Their inside shot, 65, jump shot, transition defense. And then if there's a forced three point, how much do they take off the three point range? And that'd be a different video on shooting. And see, take a look at this. Portland's away defense, not as good as their home defense. Two and two on the stop. These are all one to ten numbers. All right. Let's take a look at uh, the Celtics away defense. Four and three. Take a look at the Denver Nuggets. Let me see, let me let me find the Denver Nuggets uh, defensive card. Give me one sec here. They're away pace figures, and then they're away defense. They're not stopping anybody, but we know what the early to mid-'80s Nuggets teams were. They were run and gun, no defense, and it's done well here with this game. Oh, there's their defensive card, their home defensive card. They get stops on twos, right? Take a look at the same season, 83-84 San Antonio Spurs. No ability to stop a transition, no ability to stop a set offense, and no ability to stop a team that wants to get out on the break. Pick and roll defense, that's a 1-20 to 20 number. That's, the, that's as bad as it gets. Bulls. Look at the 92-93 Bulls on the away side. That's their defense. Their pick and roll defense, the block, the auxiliary. And then Golden State at home. Look at this. This is about as good as it gets. Five. They're stopping. These Again, these are 1 to 10 numbers, so they're going to stop a team that's trying to get out in transition half the time. They're going to stop the break half the time. And when a team ends up trying to, to get into their half-court offense, they're going to get a stop here half the time as well, which means they're playing good defense and they're going to force a tough shot. Okay? But you can see the difference in, like, the field goal shooting, like Golden State 67 Here's that Nugget team, Nuggets team again, 73. That's different all the way down to the, to the Sixers here. 65s. That's really good. So <clears throat> with that said, let's take a look at some of the individual cards. Here's Julius Irving from the 77-76 from the Philadelphia team that went to the finals against, of course, Big Red and the Portland Trailblazers. Each player has an offensive card and a defensive card. And I know there's going to be some comments about these cards look really busy. They look cluttered. They look like this. They look like that. I get it. Um, I was the same way when I first opened the game and, and started looking into it. But I've been playing the game for like five years now. And uh, I mean, it, 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 this is looked like the most simple card to me, but again, that's just familiarity, okay? Um, Kevin Garnett from the 11-12 Celtics. Here's Alex English from the 83-84 Nuggets. Very good all-around offensive player. I'll explain why that's the case, but a poor defender. MJ's card from the 92-93 Bulls, and then the Ben Gordon card. Um, 
each of these cards has a different section. I'm going to go through them all. Let's let's just do it on the on Larry Bird's card. All right. So across the top, these are one one to one hundred numbers. Okay. And when I do the the video on shot making, this will make sense. As will this, and how how all of these apply to whether or not a shot is good. It starts with this, then it goes to this, and then it goes to this, all right? So inside shot for Larry Bird, one to 24, he's good. And a jump shot, one to 20, he's good. A three-pointer, one to 42, he's good. 90% free throw shooter. This is his offensive rebounding. The, the higher the negative number, the better offensive rebounder a player is. Bird, here's Walton. Minus four. Um, just for comparison's sake, Dennis Rodman on the ninety-five or in the ninety-six, ninety-seven Bulls is a negative twelve here. Um, working back, this is a loose ball foul rating. This is his free throw percentage if he is fatigued. And then this, a player has a chance to make a shot with a either a power move or an athletic move. He also has a chance to make a shot if he drives and there is help defense. And this is what you use to get around that, which will make more sense when I go through the uh, the shot making video. Player name, I added the logo, all his uh, relevant statistics. His This is his um, offensive grade. He's an offensive A player. Obviously, his position, he can play two positions. This six is his assist rating. All right. Now, these are the offensive moves that each player can make. If they set up in the half court offense and Larry Bird has the ball, he can either pass, which is basically playmaking, shoot from outside, drive on his on his defender or post up his defender. Okay. And these are all one to 100 numbers. So in an, in a, in a situation where Larry Bird is being guarded by, let's say he's being guarded by Julius Irving here. You're going to flip a fast action card and look at the 100 number and you're going to look at the at the uh the 1 to 10 number. If the 1 to 10 number is a 1 to 5, Julius Irving stops the move. If it's not, you take a look at where where the 1 to 100 number falls in here. If it's 1 to 10, it's an auxiliary play. If it's 11 to 23, he's going to dish the ball to another player for a shot, 22, 24 to, to 30, he's going to take a three-point shot, 31 to 79, he's going to shoot the ball from the outside, taking a jumper, right? And then from 80 up, he's going to rotate. It's either going to be a good rotation or a bad rotation, Okay. So these are his ranges, and the higher these numbers are here, the more proficient a player is at making that move. So you can see here that he's a good, good with the pass, he's good with the outside shot, he's good to drive, and he's an excellent post player. Take a look at Walton's card. Not so good on the drive, but excellent post player, decent from the outside, and decent to pass. Let's go over to Ben Gordon's card. Excellent passer, excellent outside shooter, decent on the drive, not a post player. Okay? Back to Bird's card. His ability to draw a foul. This is a 1 to 10 number. 6. Kevin Garnett, ability to draw a foul. 4. MJ, ability to draw a foul. 7. Just excellent. Right there. Um, really good at their ability to draw a foul. The Ox play, 
if you're if you're trying to make one of these moves, let me back up to this. If you're trying to make one of these moves and the number for Larry Bird comes up as a one to ten, it's going to be an aux auxiliary play, okay? And at that point, you look at the number twenty and you apply it to this section right here, okay? So <clears throat> this is Larry Bird in transition. One to this is all one to one hundred. So a, on a one to six, it's going to be an auxiliary play. Seven to thirty-two is a transition is a transition setup. So he's going to set up another player. Thirty-three to forty-two, he's going to take it to the hole to try to score either a layup or a dunk. And forty-three to sixty-eight is going to be a transition jump shot. So you can see the difference. Bird, good on the transition setup, ability to take it to the hole, and transition jump shot. Pretty pretty sizable gap there. By comparison's sake, let's take 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 a look at Jordan's card. One to four on the auxiliary play, that's better than one to six. He's, he can set it up here to 29, and then look at the difference here. This is the take it to the hole range. He's obviously going to take it to the hole more than a guy like Larry Bird. That's what a guy like Jordan can do for you. Here's Ben Gordon. Not so much taking it to the hole, but really good on the transition jumper, right? Alex English, transition jumper. Kevin Garnett. Look at his transition numbers. Back to the bird card in this section here. His ability to dish the ball off. If it comes into this, if if on an offensive play, he ends up having to dish it. Say it's a number, this number here comes in after you, you're checking on his drive. If, if the 100 number is a 17, he's going to dish it. Then you look at the other 100 number and where does it fall in here? 1 to 16, he dishes to a player for a dunk. 17 to 24, he dishes to another player for a three-point shot. 25 to 58, dishes to a player with a jump shot, but you add three to all the ratings. All right, this next section is the auxiliary play section. Bird, going to make a move, and the 100 number is an eight. Then you look at the, at the, at the 20 on the fast action card, if it's a 1 to 2, it's an auxiliary play. If it's a 3 to 12, it's an out of bounds. 13 to 14, it's an offensive foul. And 15 to 20, it's a turnover. This is his offensive rebounding section. This is a if he gets the offensive rebound, 199, he's going to tip dunk it. This is a tip in. This is a dunk. This is an inside shot made and he's fouled. This section here Ability on the fast break, right? 1 to 12, he takes it in. In for a, a uh, dunk. 13 to 54, in for a lay-in. And 54 up, he is going to, uh, it's going to be a fast break setup. It's going to set up another player. And this is Bird's ability to run the pick and roll. A, B, C, or D, with A being the best. So you can see... Larry Bird is a great, as we know, a great all-around offensive player. Doesn't commit a lot of turnovers. This is a one to ten, a one to one hundred number. So he basically has a ten percent chance of committing a turnover. Um, excellent at drawing fouls. Excellent in transition. Great passer of the ball, and then a decent offensive rebounder. Great free throw shooter. Excellent three point. Three-point shooter, we know that, and that's the Larry Bird card. So let's take a look at a defensive card. So across the top, there are a defender can make an auxiliary play as well, force an auxiliary play. So um, in an instance where a player is, let's say it's Larry Bird, and he wants to shoot, we draw the 100 number, and let's say the number is 86. So it's higher than Bird's shot number here, but it's also higher 
than his defenders, in this case, Julius Irving, is auxiliary play. In that case, you would look at the 20, the number 20, number 1 through 20, and see where it falls in here. So 1 to 8, he's going to steal it. 9 to 12, Bird's going to, he's going to draw the offensive foul. 13 to 16, he's going to force a tough shot. 17 to 20, he's going to play in the passing lane. Here's another defensive card. Alex English, his aux plays 95, so rare that he's going to get that. The lower this number, the better. You can see his offensive rating. This right here is a steal rating. Julius is 1.9, Alex English 1.0, MJ 2.6. That's how that works. Commit a foul, 1 to 10. 3 is good. This is just excellent. Perimeter defense, ability to stop the drive, defense in the low post. Compare that to Alex English. Okay. Ability to play the passing lane. We talked about that here. This is a 1 to 20 number to determine if he makes a steal. This is his interior block rating. Sometimes uh, an offensive player will drive and the result on the for the shot will be an interior block. And let's say it's the small forward, you would use Irving's block number. This is a 1 to 20 number. Ability to play pick and roll defense. Du di uh, double team defense. Just basic statistics. How many minutes a game? How many minutes in a row he can play without being fatigued? Block shot rating of five. Very good here. And then his ability to, to defend the inside shot, to defend the jump shot and the three-pointer, which didn't apply then. This is a loose ball foul number. And this is his defensive rebounding number, 1 to 100. If he gets an, a defensive rebound, if the number to determine that he got the rebound is a 1 to 15, the Sixers are out running the fast break. If it's a 16 to 54, they're out in transition. Here's Walton. Great defensive rebounder. This is a 1 to 100 number. Look at his ability to start the break and start the start the the the, uh, the Blazers in transition. Bird, one to eleven starts the break. Twelve to thirty one they're in transition. Then you have these Bulls from ninety two ninety three. Not not a high paced team, right? Transition eight, so they are a half court offense team. Significant difference here. So that is the player cards. Um, one thing I did that would help actually narrow it down, if the cards were designed like this, I could really see, and it doesn't look, I don't know, I don't want to say muddled or anything because it doesn't look muddled to me, but again, I've been playing the game for five years, like I said, but if you did it like this and you had these borders, you could really see what is like these are different sections of the card, right? The dish section, the auxiliary play section, the offensive rebound section, the fast break section, and the pick and roll section. The transition section, draw foul, auxiliary play, and then each individual offensive move. Easier to read than something like that if you're not used to seeing it or anything like this. So... I'm going to post this, and if you have any questions, comment. Thank you.